Thank you so much for joining in to this week's edition of Vegas Nation Blitz. I'm your host, Cassie Soto, joined this week by our special guest in Las Vegas Raiders defensive tackle, Maurice Hurst. Maurice, thanks for taking some time today. No, thanks for having me. Uh, how crazy is it, or has it settled in already, hearing your team name be called Las Vegas Raiders? Has that hit you yet? Uh, a little bit. I, I mess it up personally all the time still, so... You know, it's a little bit tough uh, at times to remember, but uh, really exciting. Well, uh, well, let's just start with something that I recently saw you tweet out, uh, Mo. And you uh, tweeted a GoFundMe fundraiser. It was called Access for All, and it's helping kids, uh, helping raise money for kids who were put out of school, obviously, because of the coronavirus, who don't have access to computers and Wi-Fi. Why was that so uh, important for you to do and voice your support for something like this? I mean, it's just a really difficult time. There's so many schools, you know, around the U.S. that, you know, just don't have access to online learning. And, you know, it unfortunately is like a lot of minorities and um, a lot of people who don't have money are going to get left behind. And, you know, there's going to be an even bigger gap uh, and it's going to be hard for them to, you know, make the um, make opportunities for themselves. So that's definitely going to be a similar trend and those kids are going to be even further behind than, you know, previously, because it's not just a summer, you know, it's a year or, you know, longer, you know, depending on what happened. Right. Well, once again, that's called access for all. Maurice has, has that link up on his uh, Instagram. So you can go there and check that out, but let's get now to the football uh, side of things here at Maurice. I can't believe that the draft was already a month ago. If you can believe that your team picking up some huge talent. I sort of just want to get your thoughts on those late round guys. You being a fifth router yourself teams overlooked some talent to let these guys get uh, to your team in the third and fourth round. How can they though really make an impact despite where they were drafted uh, in this year's class? Yeah. I mean, there's some great, you know, value guys there. Um, like we got, you know, Brian Edwards, who's just, you know, freak athlete. Um, any other draft, you can put him in the first round. Um, so, you know, you get those, those steals of the draft and, you know, like Taryn and Muse and those guys um, that we drafted later on, you know, those guys are, are people that are contribute for us and play, you know, right away, um, you know, big threats, able to, you know, kind of plug and play those guys anywhere. Well, Mo, as far as this season goes, you're entering year three now with the Raiders. How much pressure, if any at all, are you putting on yourself to replicate what you were able to do your rookie season back in 2018? 31 to Eccles, four sacks. What are you doing to, to really push yourself this year? Yeah, I mean, just, you know, pushing myself, you know, to the limit, uh, you know, every day, just working hard. Um, you know, understand the game more. And I think that's the biggest thing going from, you know, your freshman to your sophomore season and then going to that third year. Uh, you just learned so much about the game. And, um, you know, we got a new D-line coach in, in Rob Marinelli. And, you know, he's coached some of the great defensive linemen. So, you know, we've been able to watch those guys, like, you know, Warren Sapp and, um, you know, just some of those players that, you know, just really jump off the screen. You mentioned the addition of Marinelli. How about a guy like Malik Collins? What can you learn from him? Both of those guys uh, having worked together. How are you seeing yourself going to be able to grow under them? Yeah, it was good. I mean, I've always been a huge fan of his and, um, you know, just what he does on the field. You know, you get a lot of respect for certain players in the league. And he's one of those guys that I really respected um, the way that he played, the way he played tough. And, you know, when I heard he was coming to our team, I was, uh, you know, really excited to get to work with him. And, you know, he's a workhorse and he's someone that, you know, we're going to be able to push each other to, to, you know, keep getting better and keep, you know, fighting for that time in the field. And I think it's going to make both of us, you know, just better football players in general. Well, as far as some of your other teammates go, uh, Derek Carr, Darren Waller, uh, Zay Jones, and Alec Ingle, to name a few, getting some work in here. I think locally in Las Vegas already, they've been thrown at, at the local parks here. What do you think that says about them, you know, despite that the current situation that we're in, that states obviously are lifting restrictions and they're getting out there, trying to get in as much work as they can, despite these virtual times that we're in? Yeah, I mean, it's all about team building. So, um you know, getting those guys together, you know, getting them on the same page, um, you know, it's everything. And, you know, it, between the Zooms and, you know, texts and, or whatever, FaceTimes, you know, to the guys, you know, it's all just, you know, bringing us a little bit closer. You know, everyone has a little bit more time. I mean, even to some like, you know, playing Xbox or something, like just getting to, you know, spend time with uh, your teammates and get to know them and check in on them, see how their families are doing, things like that. Um, I think those are the things that bring you closer as a team. What games are you playing with uh, your teammates on Xbox? 
Uh, I mean, I I beat everyone in Madden, you know, mostly Max. I think I'm like four or five and over Max. He keeps asking me to play with him, but, you know, it's not really, you know, competition at this point. Well, let's just stick on your teammates here. Uh, Mo, I have to ask you, some of your teammates are really taking to heart the once a Raider, always a Raider, and are getting the Raider shield tattooed on different parts of their body. Do you think that they're absolutely nuts, or is this something that you might do once you get here to Las Vegas? Uh, I definitely wouldn't rule it out. Uh, you know, the guys is, you know, you love the Raiders, it's just, you know, everything that it embodies. And, um, I mean, it's just hard not to, I mean, you love the, the logo, the shield and, uh, just everything about it. It's just, you know, uh, it's different than anywhere else you go. I feel like. Yeah, well, I spoke with Jalen Richard last week and I asked him how much, uh, how excited he is to not be tackled on a baseball diamond anymore. How excited Ooh. are you to not have to tackle people on a baseball diamond anymore? Dude, that's tough. I, I was really hoping, <laughs> hoping that, you know, that, uh, you know, sadly that, you know, the A's will lose because, you know, once they lose, you know, they take off the, the baseball field, you know, so selfishly, I was rooting for, the, for them to lose, but, you know, you really wanted to win for the city. So, I mean, it, it's hard. Um, it was hard playing, you know, in the Coliseum with that, but, um, you know, Coliseum is great uh, too, though, like, love the black hole, you know, love those fans, and, you know, I'm really hoping those guys, you know, just you know, hop in a little van and, and road trip down to <laughs> Las Vegas. Well, I'm sure those fans can't wait to see you guys get going. Just excited as you guys are to get here to Las Vegas. Mo, thank you so much for taking some time again. Oh, no problem. Thanks for having me. When we come back, Vegas Nation podcast hosts Heidi Fang and NFL reporter Adam Hill will discuss if the NFL Players Association thinks that the season will start on time. Stay with us. <laughs> 